What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the park, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. And uh, Eric, I always like to mention a few episodes people should check out on Inspired Insider. And and it basically comes from the energy of the person I'm getting. And you're big in energy. And so I'm thinking, well, what what episodes would be interesting that people will get a sense? Um, I had the founder of Wild Tonic, a kombucha company on. I left the grocery store, bought the Wild Tonic blueberry basil, snapped a picture of it, sent it to their company, said, I love this. This is amazing. They make it with honey. That's one of my favorite brands. Oh, is it? Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, They make it with honey, not just sugar. And I, when I had the founder on, I think she said they spend over a million dollars a year on honey alone, just to brew, just to make the kombucha. Mm -hmm. And it's so good because it tastes like honey. You know, check it out. Her journey is like an artist, like a glass blower artist to kombucha maker to in across the the U.S. Uh, kombucha and uh, Truth Bars is also another one. I love bars that are healthy for you. Like my background is in biochemistry and as a chiropractor, so I like healthy things. And yeah. Truth Bar was something that I can't find like a good tasting bar that's actually healthy. Mm-hmm. And Truth Bar was one of those ones that I just love. Um, it's chocolate covered coconut, chocolate covered raspberry, cho- you know. Um, they have cookie dough. I'm like, this is amazing. And actually has a lot of probiotics in it. And so check that out. And we postpone well. this interview and then like you send me those things. Yes. And then while you're talking about them, I can be consuming them. <laughs> that would be amazing. I, I should do that. You know, um, the, my, one of my, my favorite, uh, YouTube channels has the guy who does the progressively, I think it's called hot ones. I don't know if you've seen it. But yeah. he does a progressive, that's, makes the people eat progressively funny. hotter. Now, I am not, I don't have a tolerant for hot things. So that would be terrible. Yeah. But we could do samplings of kombucha or something uh, alongside, I'm, right? I'm so that. I love that idea. But I'm always looking for from interesting ideas to implement. So check out those episodes, many more on Inspired Insider. And before I introduce you to Eric, who I'm obviously talking to, who's the founder of Ember Mouse, uh, this episode is brought to you by Rise25. and at Rise 25, we help businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 relationships. Um, we do that by helping you run your podcast. And for me, Eric, you know, the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking a way to give to my best relationships. Over the past 10 years of podcasting, I've, I've not seen a better way for me to have on my friends, the people I admire, the companies I admire, profile them and have them talk about their thought leadership and what they're working on on the podcast. So I believe every business should have a podcast. Member Mouse has a podcast. Um, And if you've thought of having a podcast and you want an easy button to do it and also the strategy, you can go to rise25.com and check out more and email us. We're happy to answer any questions for you. Um, Today's guest- Also on on Rise25, Mm -hmm. I checked it out and I thought it was really inspiring about how you and your your co-founder, you talk about your grandfathers and and how they're both army veterans and how you incorporate that passion that you both have and the gratitude you have of your, your totally. family line to, to support veterans and, and offer a scholarship for your programs. And that's always an exciting for, thing for me in business. When people bring their, their interests, you know, their, their genuine human interests into their, what they're creating as a company. Yeah. Know? You know, Eric, thanks for mentioning that. Um, sometimes I say that and sometimes I don't because I don't want the intro to be too long, but, but reality is it's much more than, you know, your best um, relationships. It's, I feel when you do this, it's leaving a legacy. And that was inspired by my grandfather who you saw on there, who was a Holocaust survivor. And mm-hmm. if someone goes to inspiredinsider.com, the about page, there's a full interview that the Holocaust foundation did with my grandfather about his experience through the Holocaust you know, surviving him and his brother were the only people who survived the concentration camps out of all their family. But um, his legacy lives on because of that interview, because someone from the Holocaust Foundation did that interview. My kids have watched it. He's not alive anymore, but they um, can watch it. You know, my grandkids, hopefully my great grandkids or whoever, 
will watch it. And his legacy lives on because of that interview. And I feel the same way when we do this now, it's leaving a legacy of the right. company and the person. So and, I appreciate you mentioning that. And yeah, like it's, it's a legacy. It's, it's their story, but I think it's even more than that. I feel like, especially people who went through such an, a, like an experience you can't even imagine. And they share, they share like w their story is one thing, but it changed them, obviously. And I feel like when we listen to how people were changed by experience, whether they talk to it directly or not, it shifts our lives. It inspires our lives. And I think that's what stories have always been for humanity. And podcasting is now the modern way of talking about stories. But it's a collective and communal way to share knowledge and experience to help all of us kind of uplift ourselves and, and be, uh, have a tighter connection with each other. You know, I love that. Yeah, totally. And we're, we're going to talk, I'm, I'm excited to dive into some of your, some experiences that have changed you, yeah. Eric. And, um, so big, thank you. Big shout out to Joshua Bayer, who is an amazing person and product specialist. And it was a Saturday. I had a question and I, I am a member mouse, by the way, customer, and I've known about Member Mouse since 2014. Um, and Josh like got on the line with me and we just chatted about some of the use cases. And I'm like, thank you. Like just going out of his way. He didn't have to do that. And he mm -hmm. just showed me some of the amazing more things that I should know about Member Mouse. And so thank you, Josh, for taking the time to, to chat with me. Um, he didn't know who I was, honestly, Eric. Like I didn't right. say, I was just like, hey, you know, I had a question. And it was like a Saturday and he's like, oh, let's hop on the line. I'm like, okay, that's, uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, big shout out to him. And Eric Turnison is the founder of Member Mouse. He's, he's got an absolute dedication to quality and this is insistence, I think, on perfection. And that's what's built Member Mouse in the beginning as one of the premier WordPress membership plugins on the market. And he's architected, this is, you know, Eric, it was interesting. Early on is, I think, 2014 or 13 when I first heard about Member Mouse. When I heard, okay, the same team, person, company is architected systems for Fortune 500 businesses like Walmart, Sony Pictures, Barnes & Noble, British Airways, that has also architected Member Mouse. I'm like, this is not, this is a legit, you know, solution because there's a lot of solutions out there that it's just someone, you know, are marketing something. They're not really the craft of the development, which is really what I always look for in a product is like a really, really good crafted product. And fun fact, he's also a composer, tea aficionado. If you're watching the video, he is drinking tea and you can go to learn gong food tea, which he has a course that is also, of course, hosted on Member Mouse. Um, and so Eric, thanks for joining me. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I'm so, so happy to be here. You know, when I was doing research for this interview, there's a couple of things that stuck out. And so I'd like to go down those paths. We'll see, like with this, I just have, I do a lot of research and I just go where the conversation takes us. Um, yeah. But experiences that have changed you and serendipitous moments, and maybe there's overlap there because I remember you saying something that said, you know, there's just been these serendipitous moments in my life, in my business also that, have taken me on the path. And you, you said, I think even it could be considered luck, like in, and I think with the energy, you know, being cognizant of the people around us and, you know, we can tap in and, and recognize those moments when they're there more, like we may have missed certain serendipitous moments that have come to us. So yeah. I wanted to start on the, um, the serendipitous moments and we'll get to experiences that change you. Cause I do want to hear about the silent retreat for 40 days. Because I'm not, yeah, I mean, that seems, people are like, Jeremy, can you even be silent for like two hours? But um, what if, when you think back to, it could be with Member Mouse or in your business, what's been some serendipitous moments that you've found that have changed the path? Well, I mean, Member Mouse even happening at all was a serendipitous moment in a way because I was on the track to create a completely different business, a completely different product. In fact, I was literally saying, even though I was a software engineer, I was literally saying out loud to people, I do not want to start a software company. I will never start a software company. I was on. Why? Why were you um, saying that? 
Well, that's probably a psychological answer that I don't have the capacity to really know why. But I've realized that in over over the years, like I do things like that. Like now, when I hear myself very strongly resisting something, I recognize that as something that's probably I need to do. Mm. Back then, so I don't know why I resisted it. Maybe who knows why? Um, yeah. But um, I was on track to build this ebook product and company, and it was important for me to do that because I learned all these things about internet marketing. And um, but anyway, uh, people started asking about, and I built a, a membership product for that company that was not. It was not meant to be sold. It was just custom for that company. But people started asking about it. And so eventually I got the message, oh, people are asking about this. They're not asking about the thing that I think that I'm doing. Um, so that was serendipitous. Yeah. I, you know, ultimately I listened to that. And um, you were listening to the market, which is smart. Yeah. But at yeah. that time it wasn't even a market. It was just like a person here or there. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, they could be called the market, but that's, that's, that's an interesting, to me, that's an interesting uh, uh, distinction to make because in this world of huge numbers and we're always think comparing ourselves to people who are already successful sometimes we don't we don't think that the the guidance will come to us in a in a small voice like just one of our friends saying oh hey that's really exciting or whatever um to me those those like being able to get closer and closer to hearing the 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 smaller voices of when it's time to do to make a change is what my journey is a lot about. So that was one. What's another? I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I think one of my favorite books is Wooden by John Wooden. I love mm -hmm. I love biographies, and you know, if someone doesn't know him, you know, he was one of the probably. I think he's won more NCAA championships than any other coach. Um, out there at UCLA, but I, th I don't know if it was him attributed to him, but like hard work and opportunity equals, you know, meet, you know, you get luck when you have hard work and opportunity. So I there are these, agree with that. yeah, I, I, I know you would. And that's why I said it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so yeah. I knew you would not agree with that. And, um, but I think that's interesting because you, there is luck, right? There's just like serendipitous luck. You did put yourself in a position for that luck because if you didn't code, well, if you didn't have the skills to code a membership site, which I don't, I yeah, wouldn't have been here, in that Here's position. why I don't agree with yeah, that. Because, keep, go ahead, yeah. Um, I agree with it. Like we could look at a lot of people's stories and you will see that pattern play out in their stories as yeah. a looking back and seeing how it played out. So obviously it happens. Obviously it appears that the cause of the effect of somebody being successful is caused by their hard work. And it appears that way. But to me, um, I'm interested in the more fundamental things, the more fundamental things that guided you to the point where you knew that you needed to do hard work and you had the energy and the enthusiasm to do hard work. Because somebody who's just, somebody told them that hard work is the thing that they should be doing, but their heart's not in it and they're killing themselves by doing this hard work. That's not the right answer for that person. And it's a lot of, a lot of us do that where we're just blindly following somebody's guidance, external guidance, rather than learning to listen to ourselves. And there are two other serendipitous things that happened in my journey that, that come to mind. And one is probably about five years into Member Mouse. Like at this point, I was on the hard work track. I'd been working really hard, like 80 hour weeks. I was working two jobs to fund paying my team to build Member Mouse. Member Mouse was not financially supporting itself. And um, I was totally burnt out. And um, I needed to take a break. And I, I planned this trip to Mexico. And um, about a week before I left for Mexico, this thought came into my mind seemingly from nowhere. And the thought was, you're not going to take your laptop with you. And the, the reaction to that thought was the most interesting thing to me. And the reaction was fear. And, oh, well, I'm not. You know, and I looked into it. Why am I afraid not to take my laptop? And the answer, you know, came through through some introspection is that, well, I'm afraid of who I am when I'm not identified with being a CEO of a company and an entrepreneur and a hardworking person. That became my identity. So I didn't know who I was outside of that. And the idea of going into the unknown and going away from who I think I am and 
surrendering to that was very scary to me. Ultimately, I did it though, and it and it taught me you so left many lessons. It. You did not I, bring it. I didn't bring it. Got it. And I disconnected. And my fear was, and this is my rationalization for for supporting the identity that I created for myself. Well, I need to do it because if I leave my company, the company is going to blow up. It can't exist without me. All this stuff. But ultimately, I went away. Everything ran smoothly. Everybody was fine, and I was like, "Wow, like I was totally wrong about that." And this is a lot better. I'm a lot more relaxed, and my team's a lot more relaxed. And so that that began that turning point began a whole nother you know journey of learning and and leaning into this. Okay, when should I be engaged? When should I allow my team to do the work? When can I step away? When is it appropriate? And having more of a balance as opposed to just like constantly being on all the time. Mm. Yeah. So what you said there was another one. What was the the next? The other one was so in 2015 this is where T comes into my life. You know, up until you know, I was well I'm clean I'm kind of clean shaven now, but basically I was clean shaven, I was wearing like custom clothes, I was living in New York City, I was, you know, going out to cocktail bars at night. I was you know, dating a girl who was wore pearls and, you know, Martha Stewart was her idol. Like I was a certain person, mm. you know, and um, I moved out to Portland and somehow I ended up at a tea table with this guy uh, my who ended up being my teacher. And it was such a profound experience and I can't even put it into words, but ultimately I ended up drinking tea with him two times a week for like, I don't know, six months, just drinking tea with this guy. Ultimately, that led to me brewing tea for myself, which ultimately led to me um, serving tea to other people. At the same time, it also started my journey of deeply becoming more sensitive to energy. It changed my eating habits. It changed. I started meditating. I shortly after that, I I met my guru and I started meditating. Now, all of these things, as an experience, were not choices I was making. It kind of felt like I was going down a slide and I was just experiencing, right. I was experiencing all these things happen and I wasn't resisting them. I was ready for them. And, um, the, the, and to me, that's why, uh, you know, nowadays when I, I have a certain amount of experience. And so I think it's natural for people who are just starting on a journey um, they want to look to people who have experience to ask them, what should I do? Um, I'm, I hold that position with a lot of reverence and care. And I'm very cautious not to bring my ego into the picture so much. So where I think that my story and how I got to where I am is means that that's a path for somebody else. And the biggest lesson that I've learned is the listening is the critical component. And also I also believe there's absolutely no way you can miss synchronicity. If if you're if something is meant to happen to you, it will happen. You may not be aware of it. And a lot of the cases and a lot of the things that I'm talking about, I wasn't aware of in the moment. I can see them in retrospect. But this fear of like missing an opportunity or it moves us to take other actions that actually may it, it can delay things, you know, but it won't. If you're meant to go in a direction, you will go there. It's just that it may end up being more painful than it needs to be. That's mm. that's been my experience. Um, I love to. You mentioned New York and Portland. Can you take me just in the places you've lived or traveled? Oh, wow. like places you've lived. Like start. I mean, you don't have to, to go deep. And I'm just curious. You grew up here, and where 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 yeah, are I the grew different up in New cities? Jersey. Okay. Uh, went to college in Boston. After college, I, I lived in New York. Um, after New York, I lived in Portland. Oh, sorry, no, I missed LA. Okay, so from New York, from Boston, I went to Las Vegas for three months, which is an interesting story. Actually, that's another major turning point. Uh, from Vegas, when that didn't work out, I went to LA. From LA, I went to New York. From New York, I went to Portland. From Portland, I went to Santa Fe. From Santa Fe, I went to Washington State. From Washington, I went back to Port Santa Fe after three months. India trips were happening around this time here and there. I went to India three times. Uh, and um, 
now I'm in Florida. Um, and why Florida? My parents okay live here. You, you know, actually, it, that's that's another major turning point. Um, you know, but Joshua Tree um, happened for a few months. So, but what's happening from my perspective? The more that I surrender and and don't think that I have a plan of my own path, the more that I learn to follow uh, excitement rather than logic or intellectual choice, the more that I end up moving around. And it's it's result because I'm kind of like just giving into this. I'm recognizing that this is part of who I am. I have significantly dwindled down the amount of weight that I carry with me physically. Like I don't, I don't own a lot of things. Hmm. Um, I can at any moment in time, I have enough experience to just like tomorrow I could be in my car and I could go somewhere. Uh, I, I have so much experience with that at this point that I'm literally not tethered to any one location. So to me, there's a, there's a curiosity at this time about, you know, more like, like when I think about talking to you, um, in the past, like two, two or three years ago, I may have said, Oh, okay, I'm going to get on here. I know the role that I'm going to be in this interview. I'm going to be the CEO of this company. I'm going to talk about these things, et cetera, et cetera. I would have it planned out basically in my mind, whether consciously or not. But now I'm just like, Oh, I'm curious to know who I'm going to show up to be in this conversation because in conversation, you are who you are. I mean, you're going to ask questions and your energy is a certain way and that's going to invoke certain things out of me. And so it's always, it's always interesting, you know, how things will play out. So that, I think that that curiosity is a gift and, and it's, and it's not on hundred percent all the time for me. Like it, it, you know, I, I can have my moments of depression and I, I can have challenges with patience sometimes, you know? And so it's, um, but even like having, bringing the curiosity to the, to the moments where I think that I'm in an uncomfortable situation, I, that's, that's really the, one of the, the big lessons. Yeah. There was a point in my life. I had to move three times in like a couple months and it was such a pain, but I had to get rid of so much stuff. It was amazing. <clears throat> yeah. You know, I was like, okay, yeah. like this 50% of stuff is gone. And then again, this 50% is gone. And then you just start to dwindle it down. You're like, okay, I really don't need all this stuff. And I could, I'm so much, I've kind of like freed a load of physical stuff. Um, and as a result of that, you're more discerning when you're about to make a choice to acquire something new. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Las Vegas. You said yes. there was a, there's always something interesting that, that goes back to Las Vegas. <laughs> so so basically, I was working in Boston as a corporate performance management consultant. This is, this is the time when I was traveling every two weeks, going to client sites, working for British Airways, working for Walmart. Um, and, you know, I basically looked around. I, I saw the, the, the trajectory of that. Okay, let's play this out. Look at the guys around me who, have, who are the pinnacle of where this path leads 20 years from now. And I was like, that, no, that's not where I want to be. So um, I started basically attending these um, learning annex seminars, uh, kind of just casting a broad net, attending things on real estate investing and attending things on um, whatever. There was this, there was this guy um, who was a stage hypnotist in, in Las Vegas who was speaking at these things, Marshall Silver. And I became very enamored of him and his stage persona. And I basically had this huge creative insight about how I could help his business make more money. And I made this, I was inspired to make this presentation over a course of a week. And I sent it to him. We got on the phone and he's like, oh, well, come out to Vegas. So I was like, okay, I quit my job and went out to Vegas. No plan. I, I didn't have any idea what was going to happen. Ended up there. And, um, you know, so some things happened that were definitely not expected. I was in my mind, I was like, Oh, this is my break. This is, you know, I'm going to be a partner in this guy's company. We're going to work on things together. I'm going to make millions of dollars, all this stuff. And it turns out that this is not anything what was going to happen. And I'm not going to say, I don't feel comfortable saying anything about particularly what unfolded because 
it would it would seem like I I would have to take certain perspectives about him, which were accurate in my mind at the time, but probably have no bearing in reality at this point in time. But ultimately, I learned that uh, it wasn't for me. And then it was, but what that situation did create is it untethered me from the path of being a part of job. It gave me significant force and motivation to leave the job. And now I was basically untethered. I was like, okay, well, what are, what do I do next? Um, and that's when I, at the end of that Las Vegas trip, I met the two guys that I started the ebook business with. And we started working on that, which then led to member mouse being built for that business. Mm. So, you know, there's a through line there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If you hadn't done that, you may have continued on that path for another exactly. year or two years. And you mentioned untethered. It's like a book that's on my list to untethered soul. Everyone recommends that book. It's, it's a list that it's a book on my list to check out. So, uh, it just, as you said, synchronicity, like it'll always keep coming back to you until it slaps you in the face and you do it <laughs> sometimes. So yeah. <laughs> maybe well, this fear, is a, fear yeah. and resistance are basically are really the only things that clog up the drain of synchronicity. Because, you know, had I been a slightly different person or had I had slightly different influences in my life at the time of making that decision, like say that I had parents that weren't supportive of me, right? And I was like, oh, I'm feeling very strongly that I need to leave this job and go to this place. And I ran up by them and they're like, no, you need to do this. You need to do that. And I was the type of person that would listen to that. Things would have a different track. Now, of course, that track would also be legitimate because I would need to learn how to work with that dynamic. But in my case, luckily, my parents were supportive, even though a lot of, most people in my life didn't understand. You have a well-paying job. You're on this great career track. Why are you going to leave it? You know, um, but, you know, luckily, they were all supportive. Um, the I want to hear about some also experiences that changed your life. And I know um, the India, I'd love for you to share the India. I mean, it sounds like you've gone many times, but specifically the one where you mentioned the silent retreat. That's fascinating. How long was it? Why did you decide to do it in the first place? Well, decision is an interesting thing, you know, and I think I would say I was more along for the ride than, than on deciding to do it. In fact, just like with member mouse, where I resisted committing to building a software company up until the final moment, it was the same with India. I was like, I'm not going to India. I'm not going to India. Like, and then somehow something shifted in my mind where one day I was like, okay, it's time to buy a ticket. And it was like one month before, uh, before the opportunity was available to go there. And, um, so I went to an ashram and, um, the idea was I was going to, I was, my goal was I was going to do a certain practice for 40 days, which involves chanting a particular mantra four hours a day for 40 days in complete silence without interacting with anything. Um, so how it happened could probably, you know, somebody knows, I don't know, but my experience going through it were many things, many profound things, but I, I think, and it would be super hard to really share. Um, but I think this whole passion for listening, for surrendering to, to coming to a place where I'm willing to let go and trust that there's something guiding me that isn't my limited intellect and being like, I'm ready to let that be in the driver's seat and not me. That definitely transpired because it's like one metaphor is uh, or simile is like, if you think about the stars and looking up at the sky, when the sun is out, you don't see the stars, the stars are there, but you can't see them because of the intensity of the sun's light. When the sun goes down, you see the stars. Another one is in a lake. If the, if the water is disturbed, the water is cloudy as the lake calms, it becomes clear. So same with the mind. If you don't, engage in the activity of speaking and thinking and in communicating these mechanisms slow down to a point where there's 
the stars, the quote unquote stars within you become more visible because there are aspects, more subtle aspects of ourself that are there that because of the intense amount of activity we engage in, we just aren't aware that they're there. So giving myself that basically pretty much probably a once in a lifetime opportunity to quiet myself in an environment where I have no distractions for 40 days. Um, I think that's anybody who does that, anybody who gets that opportunity is going to come out a different with a different perspective on life. I, I don't think it could be avoided. And that's part that's, that's the benefit of it. You know, that's a great analogy. I love that. Um, so out of that experience, Eric, you know, obviously you decided to listen more. Um, did anything specifically become clear to you in your life after you experienced that? Like, Things became did, less clear. Less clear. How I so? was very confused for a period of time mm. because, you know, I, uh, I had an idea of who I was. And now with this new experience, that, which can't be ignored and a new getting in touch with different aspects of myself, it's like it put in question who I thought I was. And so it's like, okay, how integration become like any profound experience has to be integrated and it takes time. It's like when you eat food, it takes you, you know, five minutes to eat your lunch, but it takes four hours to digest. It's the same with profound experiences in life. They take time to digest. Mm. And so I asked, I, uh, you know, I vacillated between a lot of things, you know, coming back is like who, basically the question is, who am I? Right. And, and I would, my, my personality type, something that's why patience is such an important thing to me. Sometimes I can be very eager to get to the next thing. So I'll be like, oh, okay. So I'm not, I'm not this, let me throw it out the window. Right. So in some case I was like, okay, well, uh, should I be even a part of member mouse anymore? Like how, how does this, how do these things fit together? Me being this way and me being, and I couldn't initially see how they go together. Um, and, uh, it was basically baby and bathwater situation. And it was, for me, it was either one or the other, but you know, I'm, as I kind of go further along this uh, journey with myself, it's, uh, I re I recognize that I am not a fixed thing. And, it, and when I try to fix myself into something, I get attached to who I think I am. And that's when I'm listening less to things where I should be doing something different. So the, the, the balance, the dance for me is like, okay, how do I stay open and listen while at the same time stay grounded enough to engage myself in what I need to be doing at any given time that has to do with whether it's writing music, whether it's coding, whether it's making business plans, whether it's having conversations. And conversations to me are, are like very, um, they're a lot more dynamic to me than just like us b t passing words back and forth between each other. Um, they, uh, they're like transformational opportunities in a, in and of themselves. Um, and, um, as long as we show up in an open way, like, but if we, if we come to it in like, oh, I'm always the same regardless, then we're, you know, there's no opening for learning something, but, um, every single conversation, every single meeting point is a synchronicity as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned that earlier, which is some they come can show up in small ways with people um right you know and someone could just say uh you know one of your friends or family or someone could just make a comment just a small comment that could have a huge impact right so yeah. it just kind of shows it changes trajectory of things like just a sentence or two sentences can change yeah because it's not about the word it's like the energy is the thing that ultimately is flowing through us. We, the words are the delivery mechanism, but ultimately like, as I think you probably experienced, like chiropractic, for example, is like, you're working with a physical body, but there's also a lot of energy stuff going on there. Um, and so, and I think that's, 
to me, that's a really intriguing part of being of the human experience is like everything seemingly is happening on the physical level, but with enough practice and awareness, you recognize that there's a lot going on underneath the surface, like icebergs. And, uh, and in my experience, the physical is informed by the non-physical. And, um, so for example, behaviors come from unconscious programming and things like that. That's one example. I wouldn't stop there though. It's deeper than that. But to me, that's, that's, that's what I'm passionate about, you know? And to me, like what happens on the surface, whether I end up being engaged in a company or music or whatever, is kind of secondhand information. That's, that's just the byproduct. <laughs> it's like in a, in a way. Yeah. I mean, there's a book um, I read called Molecules of Emotion by Candace Pert. And like, she talks about how the, I mean, we know that like thoughts, if you are scared, you have a thought of scared, your heart can beat faster. So it can actually have physical manifestations. And she talks about how our thoughts have those physical manifestations. Like you mentioned, yeah. if someone's in pain, well, they could be holding stress in certain areas of their body. They could be shrugging their shoulders and they have neck pain or headaches, and it could be manifested partially from positional, but, but there's a, there's thoughts and feelings that go into that manifestation as well, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we talked before we hit record and there's something you said that struck me, which is, you know, with the business, I mean, with life and the business, you know, making sure the operations are supported, there's systems in place and the practice of listening, listening, you said getting engaged when you need to get engaged. Right. I'm curious when you've listened and maybe staff or company or whatever is calling you, the message is calling you, but, but you were listening and it wasn't a point. It wasn't, you didn't find it appropriate to actually get engaged. So mm -hmm. it's sending the opposite signal of what, you know, cause I think in business, you know, some, there's just a, like sometimes fires to be put out. Right. And I'm wondering when there was a place you decided, yeah, I'm mean, here you, but this is, you got this or I'm not stepping in here. But that's still a response. Totally. Right. Yes. Like it, it engaging from a, from a kind of experiential standpoint, engaging, like attending to the needs of someone who's asking for help often doesn't look like how they should think it should look. They may say, oh, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. But the first step is like to really listen and understand what is what's really guiding this. Because, you know, especially if there's an emotional component to it where it's it's literally a fire situation. Now, the fire could could have tangible things like, oh, our website's down. <laughs> like that's that's more straightforward. It's like, OK, we got to we got to do this. Like the, the, that's you don't even need to think about that. You just respond you take care of it nuts and bolts but if somebody is coming and 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 sharing emotions about a situation the first thing is to really understand where those are coming from and a lot of times a lot of times and i i i haven't learned this so much from being successful at doing this with other people i've learned it more from attempting to do it with myself which is um a lot of times the emo emotions just need to be heard. That's it. And uh, resisting them and thinking that, like thinking that it's not an appropriate time for them and pushing them aside um, leads to yeah. bigger problems down the road, basically. Mm. And, um, and, if, and, if, and if, because I was doing that with myself, I ended up doing that with other people. So people would come to me in an emotional state about something, I would automatically start trying to solve solutions at the tangible level. Okay, what do we need to do? You know, which really would be the wrong direction because ultimately it probably, if I was willing to listen, I could hear them out. It would have been resolved within that 20 minute period. And then everything would be back to normal. Um, Eric, I don't know if you've seen the video on YouTube before the nail on the head video. Have you ever seen that? I'm going to send it to you. It's okay. 
Oh my, it's amazing. It, 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 like you're looking at me like, Jeremy, why are you smiling right now as I'm saying this? You know, I'm picturing this video. I'm going to send it to you. And I'm, I'm maybe we'll link it up if we could find it. Um, but it, it's exactly what you're talking about. Um, I won't even spoil it. It's just, yeah, it's yeah. hilarious. It's about listening to someone's emotions. Don't try and fix the problem. And right. because I fall into that same trap and then the other person just gets madder with me. <laughs> with I don't want you to solve the problem. So I'll send it right. to you. But first of all, Eric, thank you. I have one last question. And thank you for sharing your experience, your time, your your energy with, with everyone. And I want to encourage people to check out um, membermouse.com um, and check out what they have going on there and check out other episodes of the podcast, Inspired Insider. So my last question, Eric, is, use cases of member mouse. And, you know, we think, we think of, you know, when you need a solution for content management, for membership, if you're trying to sell a course or you just want to release it, um, an information course or other things, you know, there's a lot of different use cases for member mouse. And, and um, one of them I'd love to hear from your perspective, because you use it as a SaaS company. Right. So I am, I'd love for you to share um, that. And, um, there's one crazy one that I like you just briefly share before that, which is you were mentioning someone electronically unlocks doors using right. member mouse. Yeah. Basically uh, their business, um, their businesses, they are a, uh, fabrication studio. So they basically provide access to all this types of equipment for 3d printing and other things like that. So they have a physical building <clears throat> and that building is controlled. Access is controlled by an electronic lock. And because these guys are basically what they do is they're, they're, they're called makers. Um, they figure out a way to utilize member mouse such that when somebody signs up and pays for membership to access this space, they use our push notification technology, which allows you to uh, inform a third party system when events happen in member mouse. <clears throat> Um, they use that to interface with their door lock so that it, it um, gives creates an access code for all the new members, which was, you know, very neat uh, use case of member mouse. And, you know, other things are like, yes, you know, people who sell, who just need to sell because, you know, when membership sites, I think we, we often, like you said, we immediately get to the idea of protecting content. But if we just take a step back above that, there's a lot of other things like any online business where you have a service that you're selling, as soon as you talk about, I'm going to accept payment from somebody and give them something as a result of it. Immediately, as soon as you do, you've done that, you're talking about, we need them to be able to log in somewhere. We need them to be able to manage their subscription. We need to be able to, when their subscription becomes overdue or fails for some reason, have automated processes in place to allow the customer to log in somewhere, update their credit card information. We need to have security. We need to have um, the ability for them to access onboarding materials. We need them to be able to purchase additional things from us in an, in an easy way. We need to be able to have an area where we can show them, dynamically display things to the customer based on knowledge about who they are. Um, we're not even to the point about offering courses or offering content for sale, stuff like that. So member mouse facilitates all these things. Um, and it does so in a, in a way that, and in an environment, which is completely hundred percent controlled by you, right? Cause there are many, there are many different solutions available nowadays um, that are WordPress based and non WordPress based that you can go with um, and which technology somebody should choose is a completely different three hour conversation. Uh, but, you know, um, to me, uh, it's never a straightforward answer. And, and to me, actually, the guidance that I would give people now is like, if you, like who do you vibe with as a company? Like totally. if you're a beginner, yeah. you can't make decisions based on the trade-offs of, of some features versus another because where are you getting the information that you need a bit particular feature? You're getting it probably from somebody who you aspire to be like, told you that you need it or demonstrated that you need it. And you're, you have this big castle in the sky that you're building in your mind about what you're going to do. And usually the mistake the beginners make is they, they try, they get too far mentally before they actually take one step. A, a perfect example, probably people have better experience with is in, an, in a relationship. Like 
you're a, you're a man or you're a woman who you see across the room or you come in contact with somebody at the coffee shop or something on a daily basis or whatever that you have an interest in. And rather than just go up to that person and say, say, hi, my name's Eric. And then just see what happens. You imagine you go home and you imagine all these things, you know, we're, we're getting married, we're going to have kids, like whatever you do, create this huge world of experience that um, in psychological time, that is completely not playing out in reality. And ultimately, that creation of this bigger and bigger expectation will make it harder and harder to make that simple first step of literally just saying hi to this person. And it's the same thing, I think, with choosing uh, technologies. We, we're really comfortable making things a lot more complicated because it's a delaying tactic. It, it means that, oh, I'm actually doing something, but you really you're not doing anything. You, so for me, the best advice that I could give if somebody choosing something, who do you vibe with? Like if you literally are listening to me and you like me as a person, use member mouse. Like that is, a, that is a good enough indicator for you to do something. If you don't like me, then don't use member mouse. If you go on to teachable.com and you're like, you're really inspired by one of the icons that they use on their site, use teachable. Like these are the, the to me, this is the language of synchronicity. Like what lights you up and trust that that is pointing you in a direction that you would take you much longer to get to if you actually had to analyze it in terms of an Excel spreadsheet, you know? Yeah. Uh, I want to hear I use it as a SaaS company, but, you know, I remember early on when I was making the decision to get member mouse and someone was like, you know, Jeremy, you could get a free plugin that does this. And I said, right. first of all, I don't want a free plugin. I want to pay. I go, I said to them, I don't know if this sounds strange, but I want to pay a company ongoing forever because I know that, that they're going to stay in business. They're going to support the technology. I don't want a free plugin. I don't even want a one-time fee plugin. I want a plugin uh, company that's actually going to continue to improve it and support it. And so, you know, it was a di little different way of looking at it than they were looking and at it. You know what's it, really but, interesting about yeah, that go ahead. is when I started Member Mouse, I didn't know a lot. Like when I, when I actually made the decision to start a company that was a membership plugin, I didn't know a lot of things, but the one thing I was certain was this is going to be a monthly subscription. And that was total, like, that was not a thing for WordPress plugins. And by the way, it still isn't a thing. WordPress plugin companies don't do that. But for me, I was approaching it as it's, this is a software, this is an enterprise software company and it happens to be packaged in a WordPress plugin. So I didn't restrict the company in a way. And I knew just logically in order for it to be supported in order for the focus to continually be on the product and not be on constantly getting new customers in the door, it has to be a monthly fee. So that's where I started too. Yeah. I love that. Um, uh, and some people turned off by that, but that's not the customer you want anyway. Exactly. So exactly. how do you use it as a SaaS company? So we, you know, when you go to membermouse.com and you click on, you know, you click around the, the sales site, you know, all the different pages tell you things about the plugin. That has nothing to do with member mouse. Um, that's just WordPress. But when you go to the pricing page and you see, okay, here are my options. You select which one you want. You click to buy, you go to the checkout page. You're now working with member mouse. The member mouse serves up that checkout page, collects your credit card information, information make sure everything's PCI compliant. Make sure, make sure everything is secure. Make sure when you click the submit button, the, that your information is uh, encrypted on the client side to give you the highest level of PCI compliance. Um, as soon as a payment is approved and received, uh, there's, you're created as a member in our system. But in addition to that, we utilize the push notification system again to do our own internal proprietary things, which has to do with creating a license for you. So we then create a license for you in our database such that when you now are in your uh, my account, your dashboard area within membermouse.com, now you can specify the URL of the site where you're going to use membermouse. Um, so membermouse takes care of all of the things regarding the fact that you're a user, what level of access you have, how much you're paying, whether or not you're in overdue status or active status, whatever. So as a company, we don't need to worry about any of that. The only thing we need to worry about is what's the proprietary thing that we're offering? And in our case, it's a license to use MemberMouse itself. We, we, we're a company who eats our own dog food, right? 
but you know, there are a lot of other SaaS companies who use our product. Um, so what they might do is when somebody signs up, they may do something to give somebody access to an iPhone application or an Android application or, um, you know, any number of things because Memory Mouse also integrates with Zapier. And if people are familiar with Zapier, Zapier is basically this technology that is the glue between tens of thousands of different online applications, which literally means that by using Member Mouse, you can, you can perform any automated actions within those 10,000 different applications, Salesforce, you know, Gmail, Slack, et cetera, to automate and, and trigger any of your proprietary processes internally. So, you know, this is a very powerful tool, right? Yeah. Yeah. And check out, I did an interview with Wade uh, from Z founder of Zapier. Uh, oh, nice. awesome, you know, awesome interview and, and really, really powerful. But um, Eric, I want to just thank you. Um, thank you for sharing. Everyone check out membermouse.com and check out more episodes. And Eric, thanks so much. And yeah, go ahead. If you are looking for anything to help you reduce stress or anything like that, check out my tea stuff. Very cool. .com. It's yes. Very you can go practice. to learngongfutea.com. Learngongfutea.com and check it out. And yeah. if you're, I don't know, do you still offer those experiences? Well, you know, since COVID, COVID is basically the thing that shut it down. Oh, right? Okay. So Airbnb um, is kind of easing Airbnb experiences Got back it. in. Um, but I will be, I will definitely be offering okay. them again. But right okay. now, no. So if you're in... If we'll if say, if you're I listening am. to this and COVID is curtailed in somehow fashion and you are near where Eric is right now in Florida, whenever you're listening, maybe some a Florida. different city, um, check out his T Airbnb experience. Yeah. Um, go to, so. go to ericashish.com and uh, you can see what, you can okay. access my music there. You can access different things that I'm doing, but uh, yeah, it would be amazing to meet people who, like I, I look forward to the day where I'm, I sit down with somebody at tea, like, oh, I first heard about you on the, the Jeremy Weiss uh, interview. <laughs> exactly. It'll happen. And it's it will happen. Today. It will happen. So yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. Like a beach if you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand